Welcome back to my channel. My name is Wayne Metter and thank you for joining. Now if you're just now joining us in the series, the last video was talking about planning a cold frame uh, and, and ha thinking about how to build a cold frame, what you want to grow with your cold frame and where you want to put your cold frame. Today we're going to be talking about how to build the cold frame that's right here behind me out of these materials. Stay tuned. So as you know from watching my channel, you know that I always preach using the materials and the resources that you have laying around. And uh, Jerry happened to have some of these storm windows laying around. So the, the main construction of these cold frames was designed on uh, 1A, being the fact that these were the size that they are. Uh, B, we had these uh, ladder rails from Werner. Now these are the, the fiberglass ladder rails that they make those Werner ladders out of, the step ladders. And, um, we had to use these because that was kind of the criteria. We needed to use the material we had. We weren't going to go buy anymore. However, they are relatively the same size as a 2x4, so you can build this whole cold frame construction almost identical to the way I've built it using 2x4s or uh, any other material that's similar in shape. And then C, we wanted a design that would allow us to grow plants to get to be a fairly large size so that we could then pull the cold frame off the top in the springtime and we've already got nice rooted plants ready to go. Um, more than likely even harvesting currently in the harvesting status. So uh, we wanted it to be tall and we had these uh, ladder rails laying around. This is the size that we picked them up off of Craigslist and they already had the angle cut on the side. Now the angle here on the end of the ladder rail, because this is how the ladders are made to set uh, from the factory, these the, the angle on this ladder rail ends up being the angle that we uh, uh, mounted the window at at the top of the cold frame. Now when I was trying to figure out how we, gonna, we were going to block this thing up and, and prop the, the lid up, uh, I, I just didn't know. I, I didn't know how we were going to do it. So I, I came up with this. I found some bolts laying around and um, I wanted it to be something that would be quick and easy, that would be self-contained within the, the unit itself. And uh, so we had enough bolts laying around for these three um, to use these parts. And I'm simply going to mount this uh, inside the frame right here by drilling this hole through. Now this is a simple and a stable solution for us that gives us everything we need and all we have to do is pull this out and, and hinge it down and put it away and it hangs inside the rail there. So it's a great alternative for having to use a lot of hardware or something that you buy at the store. Here's what I have to say about rivets. <laughs> There's definitely a difference in quality. Uh, I purchased these rivets from the local hardware store up here. It's not a big name brand, but I'm telling you, this quality rivet, uh, this rivet is a hell of a lot better quality than this rivet. I'm not going to name any names, but this rivet uh, doesn't always break off inside the head like it should break off. Um, sometimes, rather than breaking off down inside here, they break off up here. So you've got to go back and cut them off. So think about that when you go and buy, when you're looking at different kinds of uh, brands of rivets. Secondly, uh, to do this job, I thought, well, I'm going to get a new rivet gun. I've got a lot more riveting to do with some projects coming up. So I went and bought a brand new rivet gun. <clears throat> Here, there's a name for you. This is a good rivet gun, right? It's a $25 rivet gun from Lowe's. And it's got interchangeable heads, three different sizes, four different sizes actually. This thing ought to work, right? I'll, I'll tell you, after the first five rivets, I haven't used this gun. And look at the gun I've been using. And this thing works better than the brand new gun that I just got from Lowe's. So I'm telling you, it's not always best to go out and get new equipment, even if you're buying the highest value piece of equipment that you can find in the big box store. Start to look outside of the box store and think about where you're going to find some of your tools. Many times you're going to find good quality valuable tools, even though this says made in Taiwan, uh, it's still a good tool 
that's lasted for several years and clearly it's still holding up. Now, different sizes of rivets. I chose to go with the 3 16 rivet uh, shank off the side and this one here will adjust from the 1 quarter to the 1 8 height meaning that it works really well um, when I'm either trying to bind two pieces of fiberglass together or a piece of fiberglass and a piece of, of metal tin which is a little thinner than the fiberglass so this is a great rivet to go with. Now where I've got multiple pieces of fiberglass then this half inch um, shank works great. The problem with this half inch shank, I don't know if you can see it, it's the brand. Now one more thing I want to share with you when we're talking about the value of using rivets. Um, they're great because they're forgiving. It's just simple to use the same drill bit that you drilled the hole for the rivet in the first place. Uh, use that drill bit, drill off the head of the, the rivet, drill it out, and uh, either put a new rivet in its place or if you're needing to move the uh, rivet to a new location. It's very easy to do that and it's forgiving and very uh, low damage to the material that you're using. Now the next step in this process is simply to build the back of the cold frame. I don't have a big square, but you always want to remember to square it up where you can. And I'm getting this fairly accurate for what this is. Um, I mean, this is spot on. So now that I've got this squared up, I'm ready to put the back sheet of metal on this. Now that we have the back of the cold frame built, all we have to do is repeat that process on the front. And instead of putting metal on there, we're going to put some of that plastic or that translucent material. Simply uh, something that I've chose to do to get a little bit more light in the cold frame. And I may change my mind once we get into the season and find out uh, maybe that's not what we want. So this is going to be an experiment we can all share together. So now that we have the back and the front done, this is where it can get a little bit tricky. We have to put the sides together or at least connect the two front and the back. And if you're working by myself or by yourself like I am right now, um, clamps come in handy or an extra set of hands and having somebody there with you is definitely the way to go. But uh, in this case, uh, I have, you can, now you can take a, uh, a two by four and, and utilize, uh, if you're building this out of two by fours rather than fiberglass, you can certainly use them and clamp them in this place and screw them together. And, uh, but in our case, we're using fiberglass. So I'm going to go ahead and get our holes drilled and affix the ends of this together. Now that we have the main frame of the box put together, uh, I have this corner left off. This is one of the other boxes I was working on, but this corner is left off so you can see kind of what we're working with for structure. Uh, but we got to put a, an end cap on this in some way. And I've cut out a piece of metal, and generally what I was using uh, to cut metal was these tin snips right here. And uh, they're an old set of tin snips, so they don't necessarily cut metal well. And I was able to cut across this way, but not down the line. So to cut down the uh, lengthwise on this metal, I was just using a 4-inch angle grinder and cutting it out. But you know, another nice thing about having one of these angle grinders, you don't have to do this. And it all depends on the material you're using. But in this case, I was able to clean up these edges, get rid of all the sharp corners, and make it so that uh, nobody gets cut when they're using the uh, cold frame. Now, to, to hold this in, I've just cut a couple of small pieces. And again, you can imagine two by fours being in, these, in this position. But I've couple, cut a couple of pieces that will, will get affixed here and then the metal will go right on the end. So we'll get that done. So before now, we've finished, we've got the lid completed, we've built the frame, we've got the, the whole front of this finished off, and I, I've, again, I've left this off just so you can see what we're working with, but uh, it's time to put the lid on. And uh, we've already got that, that brace built into the lid. We're gonna set the lid on, and the last thing we have to do is put hinges on the backside 
and a handle right here on the front. Now the hinges I chose to use, I'm just putting two, uh, one on each end, but the, they're just uh, the, one of the mo more affordable hinges that I could find at the local hardware store, and we'll put them on the back. So that is how you build cold frames. I know it was a long video, a little bit longer than normal, but I wanted to make sure and give you everything that you need. Make sure you go down to the description if you have any questions after you read the description and uh, look at the references and resources I gave you there. Um, then ask me in the comments below. Now, I do have one question for you though. How would you have made these cold frames better or how would you have engineered them differently? And uh, if you would have engineered something differently, please let me know what you would have done. I might just make some modifications myself. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support and for being here. Up next, we're gonna be talking about how to plant cold frames and uh, how to care for them or the beginning stages of caring for them. Stay tuned.